Hello and welcome to MyMoneyMaths.co.uk video tutorials. And today we're going to be adding and subtracting mixed numbers. Okay, there are a number of different ways we can add and subtract uh, mixed numbers. So I'm going to go through the uh, sort of traditional way, I suppose, and then I've got an alternative uh, option for you to see if you prefer to use that method. So on to question one. We have one and three quarters. And we're going to add that to two and two thirds. Right, first of all, we're adding. Okay, so it's a good idea to put the whole numbers to one side just for now. And we're just going to concentrate on the fraction part of the mixed number. So, if we bring the three quarters down to here and the two thirds to here, the first thing we need to do is find a common denominator, a new common denominator. And if I multiply these denominators, I get 12. So if I write those in as my new fractions. And <clears throat> don't forget, this fraction is equivalent to this. And I've multiplied my denominator here by 3. So I need to do the same with the top. So I get a new denominator of 9. On the second fraction, I've multiplied it by 4 to get 12. So I do the same with my numerator. 2 times 4 is 8. And I'm going to be adding these together. So if I take the 9 twelfths and the 8 twelfths and I add them together, I finish up with 17 twelfths, which is the same as saying 1 and 5 twelfths. If I then add the original whole numbers, which is 1 and 2, so I end up with 1, add 2, add the 1 and 5 twelfths. I finish up with 1, 2, th two 3, 4, and the 5 twelfths for my final answer. Okay, we can look at the same question again. Question 1, which is 1 and 3 quarters plus 2 and Sorry, two thirds. And what we can do is we've got a different way. We can use the box method to see if this makes any, any makes it any easier. So if we draw a box and put it into quarters, into four parts like so. And if I take my first mixed number here into the whole number and the fraction. And then the second mixed number, which is two and two thirds. And as you'll see from this method, it does exactly the same thing as the previous uh, approach, but it's just a different layout. And a lot of children do find it much easier doing one section at a time. So the first thing we need to do is find a new common denominator, which we know when we multiply these together, we're going to get 12. And I've multiplied my 4 by 3 to get the 12, so I need to do the same with the numerator at the top, which so it's 9. I've multiplied by 3 by 4 to get the new 12. Do the same with the top with the 2, so it's 8. And then I can add them together. So I've got my 9 twelfths and my 8 twelfths, which gives me 17 twelfths. That's the same as saying 1 and 5 twelfths. And over here... I've got my one hole and my two holes, so that's three all together. And I can add them all together for a final answer of four and five twelfths. I really like this method. I think it's like working in, in columns and vertical method like we do for our standard addition and subtraction. So give it a go and see which one you prefer. And next we're on to question two, and this time we're subtracting, but it's exactly the same. We're just just subtracting instead. So the question is 4 and 3 fifths. We're subtracting this time 2 and 5 sixths. Okay, so I'm going to put it into a box and then we'll stick with the box method for the remaining three questions. Cut my box into quarters, into four parts, and I'm going to write 4 and 3 fifths my first mixed number and then my second mixed number is two and five sixths 
Don't forget, we are subtracting this time. It's very important you double check the operation that's taking place. As I see this mistake in my classroom all the time, uh, it just takes an extra second or so just to make sure you're happy whether you are subtracting or ad uh, adding. Okay, so the first thing we need to do is find a new common denominator. So if we have five times six, it's going to give me 30 for our new equivalent fractions. I've multiplied five by six to get 30, so I'm gonna do the same with the numerator. So three times six is 18. I'm going to do six times five to make my 30, do the same with the top. So that's now 25. And as we can see, the 18 over 30 subtract 25 over 30. The 18 over 30 is smaller. So we're going to need to borrow like we would with a traditional column method. So I'm going to borrow one from the four. Let's so say this now is three. And I'm going to bring that extra one over here, which is the same as saying 30 out of 30. That's just the same as saying one whole pizza, 30 slices out of 30. So altogether, I have 48 over 30. 30 and I'm going to subtract the 25 over 30 to give me 23 over 30 and then I take my 3 subtract the 2 gives me 1 for a final answer of 1 and 23 over 30 and next one to question 3 and this time it's 3 and 8 tenths and we're adding double check that we are adding 1 and 2 thirds so again I'm going to draw my 4 quarters in my box my first mixed number is 3 and 8 tenths my second is one and two thirds and we're going to find common denominator so three times ten is thirty yet again and we've multiplied this by three so we need to do the same with the numerator so that's twenty four over thirty we've multiplied the three by ten I'm going to do the same with the numerator. So 2 times 10 is 20, and I'm going to add these together. So we finish up with 24 over 30, add 20 over 30, which gives us 44 over 30, which is the same as saying 1 and 14 over 30. When I put these all together, so I have my whole numbers, 3 plus the 1, plus the 1, plus the 14 over 30, I get a final answer of 3, 4, 5, and 14 thirtieths. And finally, we're on to question 4. And back to subtraction again, so 2 and 4 sevenths. I'm subtracting, remembering the correct operation. Subtract 1 and 5 sixths. So, first of all, we need to draw our box. And we're going to separate it into four smaller quarters. And so, the first mixed number here, which is two and four sevenths and we're going to subtract one and five sixths okay so the first thing we're going to do is find a common denominator so seven times six is 42 for our new equivalent fractions i've multiplied my seven by six to get the 42 so i'm going to do the same with the top so 6 times 4 is 24. The bottom, I've done 6 times 7 to get 42. Do the same with the numerator, which is 35. And again, you'll notice that the, the top, the first fraction, 
is smaller than the second at the bottom. So we're going to need to borrow again. So if we borrow from the two, which now becomes a one, and we're going to bring that one, which is the same as saying 42 out of 42, over into the right-hand side box. And altogether, 24 over 42 and 42 over 42 gives us a total of 66 over 42. We can then subtract the 35 from over 42 from this to give us 31 over 42 left over. And here we have 1, subtract 1, which gives us nothing. So we have a final answer of 31 over 42. Lots of children find these among the hardest of the questions on your arithmetic paper. Lots of practice and have a go at using this box to help you set it out. Um, you'll be um, fluent in no time. So make sure you have a go at those uh, remaining 12 questions uh, and keep practicing. All the very best and take care.